So of course, if you're familiar with the original Valentino Uomo, you know it's this really beautiful iris and hazelnut kind of a fragrance. Since then, we've had many flankers, and now in 2022, we have a flanker of a flanker. This one is called Valentino Uomo, born in Roma, coral fantasy. It does have some coral accents on the box and bottle in terms of the hue. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now before I begin today's review of Valentino Uomo Born in Roma Coral Fantasy and I tell you all about this fragrance, the notes, the longevity, the performance, comparison, so on and so forth, I do want to start things off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. It's absolutely free and it would mean so much to me. Thank you for that. Hit the bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload these daily videos and of course give this video a thumbs up if you took something of value you from today's episode, it would really mean a lot to me. Now here is a fragrance composed by Jean-Christophe Herault and Nicolas Beaulieu, and this is a flanker of a flanker. Like I said, the original Valentino Uomo beautiful iris-based fragrance, kind of along the same lines of Dior Homme, which also had a lot of iris, and you know, that one was composed by Olivier Polge, and then of course some other perfumers started to take credit for it. Here we have a fragrance that was composed by two perfumers, and interestingly enough when you take a look at the original Valentino Uomo Born in Roma, I think either the original or the Yellow Dream flanker because there's been so many versions. They've taken it in a sort of pineapple direction, a spicy gingerbread direction. When you take a look at the note breakdown for this one, it has red apple in the opening which I thought was interesting. I'm familiar with that note from Lacoste, Style and Play. Also Hugo Boss number no. 6, also known as Boss Bottled. So I've smelled apple in and quite a number of fragrances before, designer fragrances at that. And this one also has patchouli, tobacco, it has some warmer ingredients, and it also does compare a bit to Born in Roma, the original. So I'm excited to give you my thoughts on the smell and also let you know how different I think it is and what ways it's different and which one I prefer. But let's go ahead and start things off with a quick look at the presentation. Now, right in the opening of this fragrance, the, the first thing that I thought at least was, this is definitely a flanker of Born in Roma. And it does have a lot of similar ingredients in here. And you know, my main criticism for some of the previous editions is they just reminded me too darn much of Stronger With You by Emporio Armani. I get it, it's a successful DNA, it smells really, really good, but do we really need all of these other designer fragrances to utilize that Stronger With You DNA? And you can't blame the industry for doing this because they see what works. They look at the numbers, they have the control groups, they see what sells and what resonates with consumers. And I gotta admit, it's, it's a good smell. It smells very good. But I think if you're someone like me who has smelled a lot of other fragrances, I think one could become easily disenchanted by the experience. But in any case, it does have some redeeming factors to it, which I'm actually quite appreciative of. Namely, in the opening, you have that red apple note. So in place of the pineapple that was found in a previous edition, here we do actually have a red apple note, which has a really nice personality in the opening and it does kind of compound the sweetness of the fragrance but not in a saccharine way it's not overly sweet or you know cloyingly sweet or anything like that so I certainly appreciate that. And then you do have tobacco in the dry down, but it's not strong. And it's not a tobacco that I can really compare to any other tobacco, whether it be tobacco vanille or tabarome. I can't really compare it to any other tobacco, but I am getting something kind of warm and aromatic in here. You know, it's interesting because I just finished reviewing, I'm not sure when I'm gonna publish this video, but I just finished reviewing another fragrance that has some similar ingredients. Another fragrance that also has cardamom, lavender and clary sage in it and that is guess 
Uomo. Did not care for that fragrance. Uh, it smells very generic, very nondescript. I don't think it has anything special going for it. Now you take a look at this fragrance, it has those ingredients and then some. So those ingredients are found in, you know, contemporary modern fragrances as of the last few years. And I do enjoy lavender and clary sage and I think they smell very clean, very youthful. They have a very well-groomed personality about them. And I like how they added that sort of red apple and tobacco and patchouli personality in here to sort of offset that young clean edge that it would have had and now it takes it in a bit more of a playful and dare I even say flirtatious direction which I think is kind of nice. However, that direction still kind of reminds me of Stronger With You by Emporio Armani. So at the end of the day, is it a pleasant scent? Yes, of course. Uh, no rough edges, uh, nothing challenging, uh, very mass appealing, and it has a really addictive sweetness to it. Is it anything super unique or original? Not really. But again, you know, brands are trying to manufacture fragrances that sell. And if you like the way that it smells, by all means, please wear it. You know, don't let my opinion deter you from trying this fragrance you know at the end of the day scent is subjective ultimately you're gonna smell some stuff that you like and I dislike and vice versa and that's what makes this such an amazing hobby let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment now first up in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell gotta say it it's still very much in line with the stronger with you DNA by Emporio Armani but it is a very pleasant smell my wife really likes it it is the type of DNA that you would get complimented on and I do think it has a lot going for it longevity is about seven to eight hours projection was great for the first hour of application it did radiate beyond an arm's length it didn't start to sit closer to the skin until around that seven to eight hour mark and right Right around that time it pretty much disappeared you can either reapply or put on something else in terms of the versatility i think you can wear this one any season any occasion although it is a little bit more casual leaning i can see the original valentino uomo being worn very well and very nicely in a formal scenario this one is probably a little bit more date night and clubbing because it does have that sweetness in here and it does have a little bit of a tonka bean slash amber vibe in the base too so the sweetness is not just coming from the fruits it's coming from a few different directions and I can see this appealing to somebody who's a bit on the younger side of things and in terms of the presentation yeah the names always kind of seemed arbitrary to me and I don't know what the inspiration is yellow dream I'm still racking my brains trying to figure out where they came out with that but coral fantasy hey I'll take it it sounds like a vacation type of a scent so my final verdict on this fragrance is if you like the Emporio Armani stronger with you DNA you're looking for some something that has more of a red apple feel, decent performance, a good date night and clubbing fragrance that leans on the flirty side of things. Check out Coral Fantasy. I hope you like it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this review. Valentino Uomo, Born in Roma, Coral Fantasy. If you did enjoy this review, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit that bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up. If you took something of value from today's episode, it would really mean a lot to me. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.